This video is going to be working on some word problems that are found on the back of your Unit 10 volume flipbook. And if you look at these four word problems class, you're going to see that each of them is not just a, a single shape or a single object, but multiple objects. Now we've already learned in class how to find the volume of a prism, a cylinder, pyramid, um, cone, and sphere. Now we're going to get to a little more complex. Now we start getting more real-life type shapes that actually are a combination of a number of different objects. Sometimes they're added together. Sometimes one object is cut out of another one. and We have to find the difference between those two. So you need to be able to work through these problems class and find the volume of what I call a composite shape or composite object. More than one object um, put together or combined together in some way. So here's the first question. We'll work on the first two, the left side uh, word problems in this video. We'll do the other two in the next video. What is the volume of the object? Now this kind of to me looks like a 35 millimeter camera and maybe it looks like something else to you, but you can see class there is no formula to find the volume of this whole object and just one formula but we do have a formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism and we know the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder if we can find those two pieces and add them together we can find the volume of the entire object so here's how we'll do this let's break it down let's find the area of the prism portion first. This is a rectangular prism. I'm going to select a base. I'll go ahead and pick the, the bottom of this as my base. And now take a look class. 12 is the measurement of this edge. 6 is the measurement of this edge. That corresponds to this 6. That means our height is 14. So let's keep that in mind as we work through our prism. All right, so that means our base area, it's a rectangular prism. Our base area is going to be a rectangle. That's going to be length times width. And we'll pick, let's just say 12 is our length. 6 is our width. And we have a base area of 12 times 6, which is 72. Remember, area is in unit squared or feet squared. All right, we already identified our height of our rectangular prism is 14 feet. And that means the volume of this rectangular prism is our base area times our height, 72 times 14. That is 1,008. Volume is in cubic units, so it's going to be feet squared. There is our volume. Oops, that's not a very good circle. There is our volume of our rectangular prism. Now let's find the volume of the cylinder. So our cylinder, I'm going to go ahead and pick a base. It's got to be one of the circles. That's the only way we can pick a base from a cylinder. So I'll pick that as my base. If that's my base, well, the radius is 4 feet, and the height now is this dimension right here. The distance between the two bases is 4 feet. Now I just noticed, class, this 12 feet, man, that could be confusing. That looks like it could be how long this is or what the height of the cylinder is. But you can see they drew an arrow here to make sure you know that's not what that is. That means the 12 feet, we have to assume it goes together with the base of the rectangular prism. All right, let's do our cylinder. The base area of our cylinder, well, the base of a cylinder is a circle. That means it's going to be pi r squared, which is pi, the radius was marked as 4. So pi 4 squared, and that's 16 pi feet squared. I'm going to leave it in terms of pi for the moment. Just like we've done before, our height we know is also 4 feet, and that means the volume of our cylinder is 
our base. Actually, I'm going to write it's our base area times our height, which is equal to 16 pi times 4. We can go ahead and put that directly in our calculator. Look, 16. I know there's a pi here somewhere. Of course, I can't see it right now. Let's get rid of that. There it is. 16 pi times 4 equals 201.06. That's what I'll write. 201.06. I could write 0.1, but I'll leave it in two decimals because we're going to use it again later. So there is our volume of our cylinder. And class, I'm going to do something here real quick. I think there's a way I can do this. Let me slide this over. It's actually going to be kind of messy, and I'm going to run out of time if I do this. I should have written in here the actual volume formula. It's a good idea to keep doing that just to remind you and get you to make sure you have that memorized. Volume equals base area times height. There we go. All right, now, our entire shape, or we can just put on here, what's our volume of our object? The volume of our object is going to be equal to the volume of the rectangular prism plus the volume of the cylinder. <clears throat> We're going to add those up. <clears throat> when we do that, we can go ahead and round that. It's going to be 1,209, and now I'm going to round it to one decimal place. I left this as two decimal places, so just in case this had decimals, we wouldn't round too much. So now we can see, we can round the final answer to one decimal place. And there is the volume of the entire shape. All we had to do is add them together. Let's take a look at the next one. The ends of this object are made with a cylinder, which has been cut in half. That's important to know. What is the volume of the object? Well, I can clearly see in this picture that this middle piece is just a rectangular prism. Let's do that first. So let's find the area of the prism first. I'm going to go ahead and pick a base. Let's see. I'm going to pick one of the ends here as the base. So there's my base. And that means my height is going to be 12. You can see, class, that this base has a 4 inch side or edge and another 4 inch side right here. This, sorry, 4 feet. This is 4 feet. This is 4 feet. This is the only dimension of our rectangular prism that's not part of the edges of our base. So that means it has to be height. All right, let's find the volume. The base area, well, the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. That's going to be length times width. We've got 4 times 4, and that's 16 feet squared. That's this area right here. We already identified the height. We've done our job. That's 12 feet. You'll see in these questions class why it's important to identify the height correctly so you don't end up writing 4 feet here. And now the volume. The volume is base area times height, which is 16 times 12, and that's equal to 192 feet cubed. There is our volume of our prism. Now we've got to deal with the volume of these two ends. We know they come from a cylinder. And here's what you have to realize. If the ends are made from a cylinder which has been cut in half, that means we could take this piece and this piece and put them both together and we get a complete cylinder. So let's kind of visualize this. If we take that cylinder and we put them both together, this tells us that the radius is 2. You can see the radius is 2. So I know the radius of this uh, this face or this base is going to be 2. So we can just treat this as a cylinder with a radius of 2. We put them both together. We've got a diameter of 4 and a radius of 2. And we also know, class, if we, I'm going to use a different color here, if we treat this top circle 
as the base, then we know the height is going to be 4 feet. So the distance between the top circle and the bottom circle is 4 feet. So let's do our cylinder. Base area of a cylinder is a circle. Pi r squared is how we find the area of a circle. So it's going to be pi times 2 squared. So our base is going to be 4, sorry, 4 pi feet squared. That covers this whole circle area. Now we're going to go ahead and insert our height. We already figured out our height was 4 feet. And that means the volume of our cylinder is going to be base area times height, which is 4 pi times 4. Put that in your calculator. 4 pi times 4. That equals 50.265. I'm going to round it to 50.27. Notice I round to more than one decimal place just because I'm going to be using that number again. So there is the volume of our cylinder. We've covered both, both sides, both ends of this shape, so that covers the whole volume of the entire shape. And now we can go ahead and add these together to find the volume of the whole thing. So the volume of the whole thing is 192 plus 50.27. We're going to round that. Let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. 192 plus 50.27. That equals 242.27. I'm going to round that to 242.3. So 242.3 feet cubed. That's the entire volume of this composite object. We'll do the next two questions in the next video.